Although artificial intelligence has been a familiar concept to most of us for at least a decade or more, there hasn't been a day since November 2022 that I haven't seen a news article or social post about it. Of course, November 2022 was when ChatGPT was released, and it promised to change everything. We're approaching 18 months since that date, and it's safe to say the world hasn't changed that much, apart from the fact that AI mania is at an all-time high. In the days and weeks following ChatGPT's release, there was an almost instant response by internet side hustlers selling ChatGPT courses and changing their LinkedIn status to AI expert or prompt engineer. There is nothing wrong with this on the surface, but the marketing behind this course is usually some form of overzealous promise on how this is going to benefit your career or scaremongering on how you will lose your job if you don't buy it. But come on, let's be serious. Talking to ChatGPT or any other AI chatbot isn't exactly rocket science. For those that have grown up with the internet, it's not too dissimilar from being good at using Google. Although I'm fully bought into the AI mania as much as the next technology professional, the hype and language used by some of these side hustlers was an early warning signal for me that we're in a bubble. Not too dissimilar from a canary in a coal mine. It's inherently human to get excited by the next big thing and throw all your energy into it. We've had it with crypto, NFTs, and the metaverse, and now artificial intelligence. Whilst a few of us have been burned on buying digital art, a virtual racehorse, or some land in the metaverse, my friends and I have been burned on all three, artificial intelligence felt very different, mainly due to the fact that there was an instant practical application of ChatGPT that went way beyond what we were used to with search engines. But 18 months on, and after being told by many that not AI, but a person using AI will be taking our jobs very soon, where exactly are we? One of the biggest differences from 18 months ago is tech stock prices. Nvidia is leading the charge at 400% increase since November 22. AMD is at 112%. Microsoft and Google are both sitting pretty at 60%. And our precious sales force has grown a whopping 84%. Now, when I question whether we're in an AI bubble, I'm talking about the financial markets, but also the hype that is being pushed to us daily by those usually selling something. Recently, there have been a number of articles discussing the AI bubble theory. And whilst ChatGPT has a huge amount of practical applications, are current valuations and hype justified? In an interesting article entitled From Boom to Bust, The AI Bubble is Only Heading in One Direction by John Norton, he asked ChatGPT about the stages of a bubble. Displacement, boom, euphoria, profit-taking and panic. He stated that we're currently in the euphoria stage, moving into the profit-taking phase. But there are little profits to be had unless you are selling hardware like Nvidia. On the other hand, Quartz argued against the theory that the AI boom is anything like the dot-com era, saying that today AI is capable of generating substantially greater revenues than the internet was in the 1990s and early 2000s. Whilst I largely agree with this statement, AI isn't exactly without its faults, hallucinations being the big one. The ChatGPT-style language that is written has also been coined a new name by Alex Hearn at The Guardian, AIEs. That is, the fact that whilst text generated by ChatGPT is grammatically correct and easy to read, there is a lot of waffle, and it uses some words so often that it's very easy to spot when text has been AI generated. Explore, tapestry, testament, and leverage all appear far more frequently in the system's output than they do at the internet at large. Moreover, as the hype cycle created this feeling of pressure for many companies to dive into Gen AI now, even if they aren't ready, in some recent research by Slack, they found that nearly all executives feel pressure to integrate AI tools into their organization, with half of executives saying that they feel a high degree of urgency to incorporate AI tools. So it won't be surprising to hear that Gartner predicts that by 2025, 90% of enterprise deployments of Gen AI will slow as costs exceed value, and 30% of those projects will be abandoned after proof of concept, due to poor data quality, inadequate risk controls, escalating costs or unclear business value. Accenture is one company reaping the rewards of this hype, with over 1 billion in AI bookings in the six-month period. Our beloved Salesforce is a fantastic case study for many of the points I've outlined here. They have caught on early to the fact that data, and huge amounts of it, is the only way to power the next generation of artificial intelligence applications. It's not enough to use the most generic LLM possible. You need to use specific LLMs for a specific purpose, using information that is specific to your business. This is why Salesforce has rebranded its platform Einstein One, combining artificial intelligence in the form of Einstein, as well as their data cloud. Salesforce were further looking to bolster their data product armory with the acquisition of Informatica, but talks have since fallen through. But Salesforce are also a great case study for another point, 
the fact that their GPT products have only been generally available for a couple of months now. It took Salesforce exactly a year from announcing their products at Trailblazer DX 2023 to releasing them at Trailblazer DX 2024. And whilst this is actually pretty impressive, the fact is that to do things properly takes time. As Salesforce have only just released their GPT products to the world, it's going to take time for customers to evaluate, implement, and integrate these products into their existing business processes, especially due to the fact that AI is very much still in its infancy and has very obvious issues when it comes to hallucinations and trust. This is going to take time to translate to dramatic revenue growth for Salesforce, as well as a productivity boost for its customers. There are a few companies that are profiting in real terms, such as Nvidia, Arm, Amazon, Microsoft, and Palantir, but these companies are the exception, not the rule. And with so much VC money flowing into startups, Futurism quotes that the real losers will be those who are raising money on the promise of selling their services for $20 per user per month. Bubbles are defined as an economic cycle that is characterized by the rapid escalation and then decline of asset values such as the stock market. So unless you're investing in financial markets, why does it matter? Well, bubbles also create hype, and hype can massively impact decisions you are making inside of your own businesses, or for your own careers. It took 48 years for electricity to reach 100% of American households, and it took half the time for the internet to go from 10 to 88% adoption in the States. ChatGPT racked up a record 100 million users in only a couple of months, becoming the fastest adopted technology in history. And whilst it's only logical that AI is going to be adopted faster than the internet, just due to the fact that technologies and ideas can spread faster than ever, foundations still need to be laid. If AI is adopted without a proper understanding of use cases and using LLMs that aren't fit for purpose, at best you could be throwing money down the drain, and at worst you could be putting company data or processes at risk. Even Salesforce, who have been some of the biggest hype men around for AI, have started to cool their jets. At the Amsterdam World Tour on the 18th of April, Ed Thompson, an ex-Gartner analyst who now works for Salesforce, suggested that we could be heading past the hype. In the classic Gartner hype cycle that seeks to understand how new technologies enter the market, the stereotype is for the hype to get out of control before falling back down to earth and slowly reaching a level of maturity. Thompson suggested with the use of some headlines such as Amazon's AI chatbot leaking data and chatbots being vulnerable to indirect prompt injection attacks that we are entering the trough of disillusionment. As much as some individuals and company would like to tell you that AI is moving at such a pace that you won't be able to catch up unless you pay X money or buy Y product, the fact is that whilst the implementation of AI is moving faster than it took people to adopt the internet or for cars to become ubiquitous, it's only natural that the implementation of groundbreaking new technologies takes time. Just as infrastructure and security protocols had to be built to accommodate the internet or cars, the foundation has to be laid for AI to be useful in companies. We need systems integrated, we need data organized, and we need AI use cases fleshed out and experimented with. And the whole world is just getting started on this journey. So should you ignore AI? Of course not. As many have said, this is potentially bigger than the internet and a new revolution is underway. But is buying a course on prompt engineering for hundreds of dollars going to help you? I doubt it. Anyone who calls himself an AI expert after messing around on ChatGBT for a bit probably isn't going to teach you much. There are plenty of free resources available from Salesforce, Amazon, Google, and LearnPrompting.org. See you on the other side.